Uh, so our last reader is Stephanie Colley, who lives with four cats and one other human. <laughs> On the first day of class this semester, one of her students said he was studying actuarial math, and Stephanie blurted out, does that mean you predict when people will die? <laughs> she went to a college that recently bought a bankrupt casino in Atlantic City and then got locked in a legal battle with Donald Trump. <laughs> she, like everyone from where she's from, has developed a theory about why and how tourists poop on the floors of public places. <laughs> and she has never broken a bone. It's a new hobby. start by reading um, this Alice Notley poem that I just came across um, that was in poetry kind of recently um, called From My Forehead. From My Forehead. He seems to be in front helping me look out of my forehead itself. Listen to me, prone night. I was its actual first child cutting a path with my sword through its papers. Then I subdued night until the desert was clear and a disc shone above. I am the hero of the struggle between despair and illumination, which is not a shaky buoyancy but claritas. The name of life or that you see it all. Just look. If you kill yourself, nothing will happen. No choices but pedestrian actions, a lying story. You have done nothing. You can be a detail, a scurrier, garbage you leave, a fit of nerves, propagating that. The front of my looking out pulls beauty, taking me, taking you. The scab in the sky is gone. We have to go beyond our calculations and the small words. Why a golden fringe on shirt come quickly riding the best horses? And next is what night the worthless was, as I sang. We don't have to believe the petite poetries. Hooves are pulling us across the yellow sands. Lost in a word, led in a word, I got there. I can never turn back, you see, and you can never turn back. Um, so then I'm going to read, I decided to bring that because I'm going to read this poem um, about horses. Um, Kim's not here, is she? Kim helped me with horse facts. Because um, <laughs> I don't actually know anything about horses. Um, but this poem is called Bridal. Um, and it has an epigraph from Alice Notley, and there's also some lines from Alice Notley's um, long poem, Disobedience. Um, they're italicized, but I'm not gonna like, you won't know. Um, <laughs> the epigraph is, life doesn't have to be human. I put a horse, I'm sorry, I'll just start over, because I may not have said the title. Um, the title is Bridal. Bridal. Life doesn't have to be human, Alice Notley. I put a horse in the poem, I braided her mane. She was all the colors I knew the word for. Chestnut, brindle, bay. It is possible to know the word for snow and never brush its crystals. It is possible to touch a woman and never know her name. The horse's name was Silence. Her hoofs clomped tracks through the snow. I knew the snow's name once, but when I touched it, I became smoke. The adjective and noun forms glide side by side. I am no longer damaged. Silence wasn't silent. Golden wasn't hewn from gold. I wanted to be myself described, not some other form. A silent girl, a girl made from snow, a girl whose hair was full of horses. I say this, but it isn't true. Escape is a sail filled with endless wind. Escaped is what the wind leaves when it goes. I imagine the feelings don't belong to me, but float, clouds through porous skin. I become a hollow shell for the horses now with braided tails who run up and down my bones. There is a type of snow that means everything is sleeping and a type that means everything is dead. Speak to me, ghoul. My name is no one and the wind isn't letting anyone else come in. There was a greenish stone lodged under the skin of my heel. A man showed me how to open the peach to its pit then split the pit to reveal an edible amber heart. The horse shook as if wind touched her, but the air was still. Can't remember the damn dream. I knew somebody could, so I shook too and placed the salty heart on my tongue. I wore white, 
The snow filled cracks in the bark so the trees wore cold lace veils. I promised the sea I would marry its salt, but here I was, frost glaring like candlelight. To say death is to know, to marry your death. The tiny church in the pines was hardly wide enough for a coffin. The dead would have to wait outside. Who was the eye who wore a white dress and did as she was told? Bridle the mare, become a tree letting go its frost-bitten needles. Drink this salt, you. And worse, who was the voice that told? Chew the heart of a peach even if it's not sweet. Become a big black eye that rises like an ink out moon. The horse began to morph. At the end I knew her eyes, the dark wet orbs, but she was soft now all around, a hazy cloud of gold. The lion, white teeth shining like snow. I felt a horse gallop in my mouth so I spit it out. Then there was another horse, another mouth, and my hands becoming a black pair of hooves. Um, I decided to read all these like sort of nature poems. Um, so now I'm going to write a poem. Yeah, I like. Um, I don't know. I decided to write a poem from the point of view of the cloud. Um, and then I brought it into workshop, and everyone was like, "Who's speaking?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it was a, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a metaphor or whatever, but also I was like, I was just trying really hard to imagine, like, what, you know, like, the logic of a cloud. I'm like, what a cloud. Okay, anyway. Um, the poem's called Strata. I'm writing from the clouds where I mother the rain. I mother the air until it crystals. I mother the ground until it's cracked by storms. My children all fall and return like flies, too numerous to be ruined by flocking birds. The world is full of dead things like me, inarticulate rocks and fallen boughs, coral, white, and calcified in a briny sea. When the bow breaks, it means the baby is being dropped from its mother's arms. This is called love. When the heart stops, the body becomes alive in new ways. It blooms, but its flowers are not lovely. Branches lacquered with frozen wings, ground littered with shriveled butterflies. At the heart of the swarm is nothing special, the warmest cell among cells. My children bring me colors and I eat them, their ultraviolet skins. The ice cracks in my mouth and I am glad to visit these high altitudes. The sun doesn't scare me. I let the rays pierce me and become the image of God a holy gold column that means angels, hallelujah. I accept prayers, I brush them off me. This is the history of rain. If I could, I would make the trees towers of red sand. I would turn all the animals to stone. I would give the rocks mouths to sing at last their dead songs. Um, and my last poem I'm going to read, because all my poems are really long, um, is a pretty new poem. I'm not sure if it's fully done. Um, it's called Pine, and it's sort of about, I went to, I went in a cave recently, probably everybody has like, been on those cave tours, it's like all over Pennsylvania, but it was really cool. Um, <laughs> so there's some caves. Pine. In the narrow room, a bright screen and the street going on outside through the bars. I didn't want any more to look outside. I didn't want the sky to become such a prominent motif. What other names there are for the throat's tight clench? Not refusal, but constriction, a squeeze. Deer strobed in light from the window, a partial view, a partial cry, from underwater, from the pines. Why did everything that mattered seem to happen in an endless dark, acquiring a broken shell, the silver gray deer, their white tails, or russet? It was a cut in what cornered, an opaque fog. Each century another half inch, a slow, slow glittering, a rock built by water, the rust trail from iron, from air. Is there room for what's human here? A coolness, a dry despite waves, a bat the size of a man's thumb and black and leathery, a feast for owls who holler. What you mean by seeing the future, not in colors or textures, not a gold foil, pink straw, a shimmer at the edge that the center has shifted to here, in this moment, a heart bent. All the points on a gold wheel spoked out from this, this center, reinscribed, a hole held up to the light. 
In the papery future, a dream of smoke. In the landscape, a mass of boulders, a cactus, a scrubby tree. In the pines, a black dirt, fungus broken up from what's been burned. Is this a landscape for humans? Is water all around? Does the sky suggest an invisible presence, a ripped open blue, a screen for projecting the future? On a distant planet, a sky like this one, and water frozen around tiny creatures that blink, don't blink, float. Proper names for vegetables, proper arrangements of beasts from single to many to no longer found. The canopy of wings. From this angle, timbers reach and branches breaking the sky into triangles and waves. I actually wasn't trying. I wasn't actually trying to attract these stories. A body, a girl, another girl, a boy. What does it mean to be a voice, to come from? This comes from my hands, my fingers on the keys, me and A at the piano plunking out the old church songs. My hands, they know how to do some things. Thank you.